Hello everyone. I've had a few people who have been sending me emails asking me about how to get images out of Floor Planner to be included into your presentation and into your website. So I just wanted to show you a few quick ways to get images out of Floor Planner. First easy way is on the dashboard. If you look at the Actions button, you'll see that there's a way to export a 2D JPEG or PNG. PNG is just an, another image format or export a 3D ping. And you'll find when you click on either one of those, there are some options. I'm going to show you a second way to do that, so it's the same options. There's also a way to get an embed code, and I'll show you why that's important in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and look at one of my models. Now, I don't know if it makes a difference or not. I found I've gotten a little bit better results doing an export by closing the panel that has my options of the information, the furniture, whatever. And it's just those little two left right arrows. So I'm going to click on that arrow, close this, and show just my space. So there's two buttons I'll be working with. The share I'll get back to, that's where I can get my embed code. But what I'm interested first is the export button. So under export, I have five options. I can export an image, and this is the 2D image. I can export a PDF, which just gives me the 2D image in a PDF format. And you can use that. You can always import that into a PowerPoint, but it's just easier to do the export image. You do not want to use the export 3D model or export FML. This is if you are exporting your model into another 3D modeling package. The one you will use, though, is to render 3D image. So I'll get my 2D image first. Now you have three settings that you need to decide. One of them is the format. You can export a JPEG, which will give you a white background a PNG, which would be transparent, or an SVG, which is a vector graphic. And I would only use the SVG if you were going to take this into InDesign and add some other stuff to it. But for the most part, you'll probably best be served by just using a JPEG. Next, you're going to decide on the resolution. For your 2D model, 1024 by 768 is probably enough, but you might want to boost it up to one of the higher resolutions. If you do this, it'll take a little bit longer for the image to arrive. I'm going to split the difference and go with 1600 by 1200. Then decide whether you want landscape or portrait. Most of us are going to want a landscape. It just depends on how you've laid out your room. Make sure that your email is here. You can decide whether you want to add a scale bar, and then you'll click Export. The image has been exported and sent to my email. And the process is usually pretty quick. As a matter of fact, probably I'm going to get an announcement before I get my 3D exports done that I've got my 2D done. So when I go to my 3D image, I again have my options of resolutions. And here I would probably go for the highest resolution. Now, this is then going to take a while for the images to show up, but this will give you the best image to work with when you're inserting it into your PowerPoint. There's the announcement that my 2D has shown up. So I now have five options. I can create my model from one of these vantage points or viewing on top. I'm going to go ahead and render each one of these. So I'll click Render and OK. And I won't bore you, but I'm going to go ahead and render the other four. So we'll return to the video in just a second. So here I am in my email, and this is Mac mail, so your mileage will vary. But you'll see that here are the individual emails of my exports, and it took about five minutes to get all of them in. So I'm going to go ahead and um, right-click and save this as an attachment. Create a new folder. Whoops, not there. I'm going to go back to my desktop so I can find it. Create a new folder. Call this my 2D and 3D models. And I'm going to make sure that I name each of these as I download them. It's not so much important for the 2D model, but I'll show you why for the 3D in just a second. So there's my 2D model. And I'm now going to download the 3D model. 
and notice it's titled flexspacemod.ping. It turns out all of them are named this. So if you don't come in and rename them as you're saving them, it may ask you to overwrite. For some reason on my Mac, it wasn't. It was just always writing it. And it just basically, I ended up only the last one that I downloaded and I had to go back and redo them. Now, unfortunately, this should come in, the images should come in in order. But I did this as Southeast, Southwest, Northwest, Northeast. And you'll notice here's a view and my next view is my top view. And so for some reason they came in out of order. So when I save my 3D images by right clicking on them, save attachment, I'm gonna to need to name this like view one, view two, and then perhaps go back into my model and try to figure out which one's the Southeast, Southwest. This one I'll do as top. So you would go through and download the rest of the models doing view 2, view 3, view 4, and view 5. So that's how you can get full-blown renderings of 3D versions of your model from five set viewpoints. However, you might want to go in and pick a particular viewpoint to show us. Let's say you want to show the teacher stand. Here my suggestion is to just do a screen capture. And so on a Mac, it's Shift-Command-3. That captures the whole screen. If I do Shift Command 4, I can bring in an arrow and select just an area. And this will save pictures and save them onto my computer. The problem is finding them. So you might also, I have a little screen capture tool I use called Grab. So Grab lets me come in and do a selection. and then I can tell it where I want to save this particular viewpoint. Apologies for you Windows users. I did a little Googling of how to take a screenshot on a PC, and there's a whole bunch of different ways depending on what keyboard you have. So I'm sorry, guys, you're kind of on your own if you're on a PC for doing a screenshot. So let's take a look at the images I have. I have my close-up that I got from Grab. I have the screenshots. This one was when I did the full screenshot, so I get all of the extra stuff, or the one where I wanted to focus on a particular area. And then I have my models. So before putting these into your PowerPoint, you'll probably want to take them into some sort of photo editing tool to crop them a little bit. And so since you all have access to Photoshop, I'm gonna go ahead and open one of these in Photoshop. So you see that when you do the exports out of Floor Planner, it tends to leave a lot of white space. So you might just want to go in and use the Crop tool in Photoshop to tighten this space up a little bit. That way you're not taking up so much space on your screen with just white. This wouldn't look quite as bad if you'd done a ping and done a transparent because you could expand the picture, but this, this will just make it a clearer picture for you. So you'll probably want to go in and take each of your images and just crop them down a little bit before you take them into your PowerPoint. So that's creating images for PowerPoint. Now there are a few other ways you can share your plan with us. Under the share button, you'll see that you can share it on Facebook or Twitter by email, Namely, you can email me your plan, a good idea, or you can embed the project. When you click on embed, you have two options. One is a URL that you could include in your website, and this would allow people to just click on a link and go look at your plan. Or if your website will allow you, you can take this embed code and put it into your website. Now I say if it will allow you, for example, Spark does not allow for embed codes yet, but Weebly and Wix do. So I'm gonna copy this embed code, and I'm going to go over to a website in Weebly. So here's the website that we actually were planning this project for. And I've taken the embed code out so that I can show you how to put it back in. But I'll come down here to the bottom, and there is an object over here called embed code. 
So I'll pull this over here, pull it underneath, and I now get this option to click and set custom HTML. I'll click on that, paste in my embed code, and click here. And it will look like nothing has happened other than this box being here. So I have to go publish and then go look at the actual website. Wait for a second here. And here's my model and a little bit of panic because it says edit this project. And it gives me options where I could go in and actually work on the project. This scared me a little bit until I realized I'm signed into Floor Planner. So the website thinks I have the ability to make changes. So I'm going to flip over to Firefox and look at the same page. And here I'll see that it just shows me the model where I can go in, I can click on 3D, and it will show me the model. Now the more complex the model, the longer this will take. So that's all you need to do to share your website. Either put a link in that takes them to the full model or do an embed code. Now you might actually want to do both because you'll notice this is rather small. If they click on the link, they get a bigger view of the model. So my suggestion is use the embed code or the link in your website and then take pictures for your presentation. The reason is, even though this looks fairly smooth in terms of moving around in my video, if you do this over Adobe Connect, it won't look good. Now you could try recording a video of you moving around your room and zooming in and out. But again, videos playing back through Connect because you're going over network distributed to a lot of people don't always look good. Having something on your website where you maybe do a little bit of a video tour of your site would be great. But I'm not sure that I would use video for my presentation. I think it's probably safer to stay with still pictures. That's it for how to get things into your presentation and your website. I'm looking forward to seeing what you all are coming up with.